In this video, we're going to walk you through the general settings of the all-in-one SEO pack. We're starting off in the WordPress dashboard, as you can see, and I'm logged in and I have the plugin installed already, uh, which is evident by its appearance in the menu on the left-hand side. So we need to just click on that and that'll take us through to general settings. Now, if you're coming from another SEO plugin to the all-in-one SEO pack, most of this should be pretty straightforward to you. You'll be able to get through this with not too much trouble at all. But of course, if this is your first time using uh, an SEO plugin, then you might be a little bit confused by some of the options that we have as we go. So I'll try to explain it in really simple terms. So of course, the first thing is just asking you to sign up to their email list for a free book, which it's up to you if you'd like to do that. The first option is that you can choose to say that you have made a donation to the plugin, uh, though this may be exclusive of the fact that you may or may not have bought the pro version of the plugin, which does exist. Uh, now, as we go along, we do see these question marks, which actually help explain quite a great deal of what's actually going on. So probably the first one that will confuse a lot of people, and maybe even the last one, is canonical URLs. So you definitely want to make sure this is enabled. What it will do is generate canonical URLs for every single page in your WordPress website. So that'll help you avoid duplicate content penalties from Google uh, and other search engines. The next setting is the choice of being able to use the original title or the one specified in the plugin. So it's asking about, do you want to use the title that you specified when setting WordPress up, which is available in uh, settings and then general. So you definitely want to use disabled because you know in most cases, you're probably going to want to use something different than the default, uh, which is indeed one of the reasons that we install the plugin in the first place. The final setting under general settings is the ability to turn on a log and it will only log important events and you can see some documentation regarding what will and will not be logged so if you're having any problems with the plugin or at least if there are problems you think may be caused by the plugin then it can be wise to log those events and this will bring us down to the home page settings which are definitely very 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 important so what we need to do first is think about what we would set as the home page title. So this is my WordPress installation that I'm using to demonstrate what we're doing here. So something that might be reasonable for this could be something along the lines of easy WordPress tutorials. Yeah, something like that. So it's just short, kind of descriptive, uh, but really where you put most of the description is below that in the home description field, which you want to keep sort of under 160 characters, so a few lines at the most. Bearing in mind that this is also what will appear in Google and other search engines when people search for your website, so you might go. So you might put something like that in, something really straightforward that describes your site concisely and what people can expect when they visit. Next, you can choose to input the keywords for your homepage. Now, if you've watched any of our other SEO videos at all, uh, you'd, you'd be well aware that it's our opinion that there's really no point in doing this. Search engines haven't given a damn about uh, keywords for some time now because of years of abuse to them. So if you'd like to go ahead and put these in, you can. Then we have the keyword settings, which is sort of where things get interesting. So you can choose to disable the keywords if you want. Like if you don't want them at all, you can just hit disable. And that will actually apply to the entirety of your website. One thing we can do is use the categories and the tags for the meta description. Only the tags for the meta description are actually enabled by default. But what this allows you to do is, you know, if you would like to go ahead with uh, meta keywords on your website is just check these. And then provided that the next box is checked, which by default it will be, is dynamically generate keywords for post page. It means that for each of the posts that you have on your WordPress website that are live, the meta keywords tag will be automatically generated by the plugin so you don't need to give it any thought just as long as that your content is well categorized and tagged appropriately it will handle it for you again it's not something that search engines really pay a great deal of attention to and they have not for a long time but this is a pretty cool feature that might make it perhaps worth your time Thereafter, we come down to the title settings. So the first one we have is rewrite titles and you want to have that enabled. The reason you want to have that enabled is so that the plugin can actually go ahead and perform what it needs to in order to create the correct titles for each page and post that you have on your website. 
you definitely want to have capitalize and capitalize category titles enabled by the way uh, though they are automatically enabled by the plugin all they do is capitalize the first letter of each word which can look a lot cleaner in search results after that we come down to the formats for the various page post category and archive titles that you'll have throughout your website now as you can see here and if you've used any other SEO plugin before uh, you'll note that there are tags that dynamically generate what the title will be so at the moment we've got so say for pages for instance we have the page title then the blog title now if you click on the question mark it will actually give you a list of all the tags that you're able to use when you're going ahead to set this up and you can do this just sort of anywhere down there as you go because there are quite a number of them to know and it's unreasonable to expect that we'd remember these all the time so for the most part and for most people what's already filled out in the title format fields is going to be acceptable I mean we've got the page title and the blog title post title blog title and so on bearing in mind that the blog title is indeed the name or the title of the blog rather than the tagline some people tend to get a little bit confused between those two and that just continues down in, you know you go through your category data archive author archive tag uh, title format and so on through to the search page and the 404 page as mentioned earlier these settings are fine for most people so we're not going to make any changes here today any changes that you may need to make are probably very specific to your need or, your, or the niche that your website operates in but if you have any questions about those feel free to ask in the comments and we'll try our best to help you next we come across the settings for custom post types so the first one is SEO for custom post types and we definitely want to make sure that's enabled there are a number of themes that are using custom post types these days to store the content rather than traditional post type next we can choose to enable the advanced options which that will actually give us a list of current post types that exist within WordPress and what we can then do is enable or disable the SEO options that appear uh, which we'll cover in a later video but in terms of this you'd probably only want to put the SEO available on posts and pages for the moment everything else in there will not really require SEO uh, to be performed on them uh, unless you have a very specific way of managing your website of course what you'll now notice is custom titles and that allows you to set a custom title tag for each of the custom post types so depending on your website once again you know it depends if you have quite a number of these post types then you would probably wish to enable that now as we go down we come towards display settings so as you can see it's showing the column labels for custom post types so at the moment we've only got posts and pages in our theme so at the moment the only post types that we're really using are posts and pages media you can do if you want what else you actually see here will depend on your site setup and what plugins you're currently running and so on though then you can see we can choose to display the menu in the admin bar which we can see up the top there in our admin bar it's a great way to get to the plugin and the settings really really quickly and easily if you would like to but of course if you don't want it there you can just simply turn it off the next setting is for where the all-in-one SEO pack menu appears in the WordPress dashboard which is currently at the top on the left at the moment I'm happy with it there so I don't feel the need to turn it off now we find ourselves looking at webmaster verification so if you use Google webmaster tools Bing webmaster central or Pinterest site verification you can very easily set these up through the plugin so typically when you would sign up to any of these tools they would say download this file upload it to a certain place on your website and then wait for us to verify that you indeed own that website what they'll do often is give you a, a very long string of characters and you can just paste these in here uh, and then the plugin will automatically insert the required tags into the theme itself once you're happy with your webmaster verification setup you can move on to the google settings so the first option that we have is the ability to put in a google plus default profile so if you weren't currently aware or maybe you hadn't really noticed for a little while now Google has been putting the Google Plus author information in search results and it is something that has been shown to improve people clicking through to your website so in this instance you could choose to put in the default profile that you would like to have so it will change depending on a post by post basis but you know you have something such as google.com slash plus slash something like that uh, as your Google Plus URL. If you didn't want to do this, of course, you can just hit disable and then you don't need to worry about it. 
But of course, you can also choose to take it a step further and enable the advanced options and choose where you would like to display the Google authorship. So at the moment, it's only for everywhere else. For the posts, you probably want to have it for the specific author of those posts. But if you're the only person that runs this website, you may choose to put that there as well because, you know, for that, then it's just you. So there's no need to worry about it. Additionally, you can also set up a publisher URL. We're not going to go into the specifics of what a publisher URL is here, but it's basically if you have a page on Google Plus that is a business page rather than a personal page, you can set that up through here so that you can link your Google Plus profile with your WordPress website. And then just after this, we can choose to connect with Google Analytics. So if you don't want to do that, you can just put in your Google Analytics ID here. But for most people, just clicking connect with Google Analytics is fine and then that'll handle tracking all the traffic to your website and what people are doing there. After the Google Analytics information, we come down to the no index settings. So basically you can choose if you want to set a default no index on any of these pages here at all or post types. And similarly with no follow. Now no index means that the page should not be indexed by search engines, though it is at their discretion to heed your robot tags. And as far as the nofollow goes, it means that they shouldn't follow any links out of that to create a, an overview of your website to be able to better crawl it. Uh, use with caution, of course. Uh, these are something that you can turn off and on as required, but you're probably not going to need to tinker with this too much. Then you just have the ability to turn on no index for categories, date, author, tag, archives, and the search page as well. So depending on the layout of your site, will you really dictate how you choose to have these settings. So no index for categories, it's limited in use really because leaving no index for categories turned on could be useful for your website, uh, but it depends. You know, if you have a lot of categories on your website and you've maintained category description on, on each of them, then you may want to turn that off because categories might be the way that people navigate through your website. Conversely, you may wish to turn no index for tag archives on because maybe you don't use tags on your website. And similarly, this applies for date and author archives as well as the search page. You can just turn these on and off as you need to. But again, it really depends on the layout of your website. Finally, we have advanced settings. So here we've got the ability to auto-generate descriptions. This will just allow your meta descriptions of each page to be automatically generated based on the excerpt and content of each post. It's turned on automatically, but of course you can turn this off if you would like to handcraft each of those meta descriptions. Next, you can choose to remove descriptions of paginated pages, which if you have a lot of paginated pages on your website, then it could be useful. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of duplicated descriptions. So use it if you think that it will be handy for you to use it, but for most people, leaving it off is probably okay. You can choose to unprotect the post meta fields. Now, these are used with XMLR PC, so if you're not sure what that is, don't go ahead and use it, but if you do need to use that functionality, then you may wish to turn this on so that you can work with your website as you need. Then we can choose to exclude pages. So if you have any specific pages on your website that you'd like to exclude, maybe a contact page or something like that, though why you would choose to do that to a page like contact page is uh, up for debate, you can do that here and just putting in a, a comma separated list. So. So something like that. The next four fields we have are for adding additional headers to posts, pages, the front page, and blog pages. So use this at your discretion. Be careful when you use it because whatever you put in here will be put in exactly as you put it into the head of the document on each page. There are arguably better ways of going around putting content into the header of your website, but if you would like to use this plugin, you can definitely do that. Once you've gone through this page of settings, uh, feel free to click update options to save all the changes that you've made. And when they've been saved, the all-in-one SEO pack will return a message similar to this that you can see at the top of the screen. We've covered quite a lot in this video. We've covered all of the general settings that are available in the all-in-one SEO pack. There's quite a lot to go through, so feel free to pause as you need. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below.